Hey guys, happy Advent! Today is our first session of our next series for the season of Advent. That's going to be four sessions and it's called the most wonderful time of the year. That's the name of our series. But today we're going to talk about the expectations that we have for Christmas and what should we be looking for during Advent. Our night is called, it, it doesn't look a lot like Christmas. And for me, that touches me really deeply because I grew up in a really small family. It was just my mom, my dad, and my sister and I. And growing up, our Christmas were really quiet. They were really intimate. Uh, we, we dressed up, we, we set up our tables, and we had dinner. We went to mass and we had dinner. And we had presents, of course, you know, but it was really nice and quiet. When I got married, however, I married into a really large family and their traditions were a lot different than mine. So when I had children, my expectations of Christmas were, as I remember, quiet, very family oriented. But my Christmas, my first 15 years married, they were actually very chaotic. So my expectations were never met. I end up many, many times I end up crying <laughs> and hiding in the closet because um, it was too loud and I couldn't even enjoy my decorations. I couldn't even enjoy um, the old traditions that I had. So I always set up my expectations to something, but actually life gave me something different. And um, I've learned not to expect things. And it's not a bad thing, you know, to expect and prepare and everything. But, you know, like, let's think about life, especially right now. Um, let's think before, even before COVID, you know, that was my experience before COVID. But even for you guys, like, maybe you expected to win a super amazing game that you've been preparing for or perform in, 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 in a big theater with your, with your theater group and it didn't happen. Or maybe you would study so hard and didn't get to take the test when you thought you were gonna get the test. Or, you know, even some of the things that we've had this year, like we haven't had our retreats, we expected our summer retreat. Thanksgiving, you know, I just came back from Thanksgiving, man, but you know, like we had Thanksgiving outside mass, you know? Um, and then with COVID, we expected to spend maybe Christmas and Thanksgiving with family maybe expected to um, have our cousins, our grandparents over and they're not coming. Or uh, maybe we lost someone, maybe your parents lost their job and then things look really different and your expectations of what this year looked like are really different. Um, and it's hard, you know, it's heartbreaking. Like I ended up in a closet every time when my expectations were not met. So without a doubt, this year has been very, very difficult for a lot of people. But we find comfort, at least I find comfort, thinking of the Holy Family, which is Mary and Joseph and Jesus. But let's think about Mary and Joseph before Jesus was born. Think of all the uncertainty and all the expectations that they had um, from the beginning. I mean, Mary and Joseph were engaged to each other, so they were going to get married. And then Mary finds out that she's pregnant before they get married. And she has to tell Joseph. So they find themselves in this weird situation, but they trusted God that this was God's plan. Um, after, they also have to face like what everybody's saying and, and, you know, not what they expected of their union. Then after that, they receive the call from the census. So they have to leave their town where um, she's growing her belly to a town miles from them um, because they have to go to a census and everybody that was born in that city, they have to go. So they have to go to Bethlehem. Um, they, they, you know, it doesn't make sense, right? Like it doesn't make sense, this pregnant woman and this man, they have to travel all this, all this time. So they get there and then when they get to Bethlehem, there's no room anywhere. So again, their expectation of coming into this town and finding a place to have a baby um, is not met. And I really don't think that Mary or Joseph thought that their baby was going to be born in a cave, in an empty stable with animals. Their expectation was not met again. And then after baby's born, 
months after, then there's Herod who hears about a Messiah and he's so afraid of losing his power that he sent, you know, he sent like his minions, his warriors, his soldiers to kill every baby in town to make sure that this Messiah is killed. So it's plain out dangerous now for Mary and Joseph. So they have to flee again to save their family. You know, COVID has been um, a lot of pivoting. You know, a lot of like, I feel like I'm a little toy ballerina, you know, from those music boxes that you're like dancing, you're <laughs> you're dancing and then all of a sudden, cook, like you have to switch this way and cook, you have to switch that way and cook. Like, that's how it feels. And as I was thinking about the Holy Family, that's how it felt for them too. You know, they have this plan and then God is like, nope, actually no this way. And then, boop, actually not this way. Boop, you know, it's like pivoting. And I was thinking, wow, Mary and Joseph understand what we're going through. Mary and Joseph actually went through a lot of the very similar things that we're going through. And yet they trusted. It wasn't easy. I don't think it was like, okay, God, I'm just going to do this. It's fine. I'm sure there was a lot of prayer, a lot of surrendering. A lot of God, I trust in you. And that's a great example for us as our expectations are not being met throughout the year with our school, with our jobs, with our families. Um, and now with Christmas, Christmas will look different. But God always has a plan. And that's something that Mary and Joseph taught us with their example. So this Christmas, we should be inspired by the bravery that Mary and Joseph had. Despite all the things that were out of their control, they're playing out brave, even at the midst of their baby being in danger to be killed. But if we think about it, because of their bravery and their yes and their trust, Jesus enters this world in like the most in perfect situations like we if we as humans were to plan his coming it would have not been planned the way God planned it and this just shows that God can do great things in the midst of challenge and chaos and even in the midst of all the difficulties um, he can do great things and he is moving he is moving today. After all this months, he is still moving, even though we can feel him, even though we can't see him, he is moving in our lives, brothers and sisters, he is. And there are so many things outside of our control, just like there were for Mary and Joseph. But the story of the first Christmas shows that God has never forgotten us and that his plan is actually perfect. And we have to remember that we are not made to be here forever, that our destination is heaven. And that brings me a little hope or a lot of hope, especially when I think of all the souls that we've lost during COVID. In the story when Herod killed all those babies, today at mass, I was thinking there were so many lives lost during COVID, so many people sick. And I thought of the innocent that died when Herod sent people to kill the babies. God did not will all the deaths, but at the same time, they're home. They're in the final destination that we're all heading towards. So we pray for all those souls and we remember that God was still in that plan and that he will bring something good. God is calling us to have an intimate relationship with him. He's calling us to get close to him. And as we learn the story of Mary and Joseph, we learn that we can turn to Mary and Joseph as their example of trust, despite everything that they went through. On Matthew, in the story of the birth of Jesus, this is what stood out to me. It says, do not be afraid to take Mary into your home. This is what the angel told Joseph. 
It says, do not be afraid to take Mary, your wife, into your home. And that's an invitation that God is giving us today. When you feel like you can no more and you need someone to pray for you, go to Mama Mary. Because God tells us to not be afraid and to go and take Mary into our home, into our hearts. When the angel tells Mary that Jesus was going to be born and he was going to name him Emmanuel, Emmanuel means God is with us. Another beautiful hidden message for us. God is with us. Take Mary into your home and remember God is with us. Jesus is born to be with us. And in Luke, when the angel talks to Mary, he says, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. He's telling that to us too. That same spirit that came to Mary, it's the same spirit of courage and trust that can live in us. And the angel is telling us, the spirit of God will call, come upon us despite all the expectations that are not being met in our lives. He also says, do not be afraid. Do not be afraid, Mary. But again, the invitation is personal for you and I. Do not be afraid. So Mary responds with her fiat, which is her yes, which is what we need to respond in order to live God's plan in our lives. May it be done to me according to your word. That our fiat, our yes, it's a yes to the invitation that God is given us to trust him despite this different season that we're living, to remember that just as he was with Mary and Joseph that first Christmas, he is with us this Christmas, with us. And with our yes, with our fiat, with our trust, with our attention to what God is saying into our lives, we can bring so much goodness, just like Mary and Joseph. I hope that this Advent, you really dive into what Mary did, what Joseph did, and how they expected baby Jesus despite all the chaos, despite all the tragedy, despite all the expectations not met. And then you just open, open your heart. Just open to see what God is doing in your life and how he wants to reveal all the goodness and all the love in your life and your family. Happy Advent, embrace all the goodies that we sent, pray for each other, and we're praying for you. God bless you.